finally, and God has something special for us. My name is Susan from Christian Life Center Malaysia. Today, we introduce our very own Pastor Dudu Zinda. Pastor Ndawa currently serves at our CLC headquarters in South Africa under our Bishop Dr. Moana and the First Lady Pastor Tina Moana. His journey in saving the Lord started as an usher and then a deacon and an elder before being ordained as a pastor in 2016. He also served as one of the ministry's treasured board of directors and oversees the finance, administration, and men of integrity, and also the evangelism outreach ministries. Pastor Ndawa has been married to his beautiful wife, Pastor Rudolph, and the wife of his youth for 10 awesome years. And both are blessed with a handsome boy. Pastor Ndawa is completely sold out for the things of God and is passionate for souls. Pastor said, we are grateful to have you as part of this conference, Higher Grace. Pastor said, we can't wait to hear what the Lord has laid in your heart for us today. Thank you. so faithful. Our God is so real. Our God can never miss his word. He can never lie. Our God is true. everyone i greet you all in the wonderful name of jesus christ this is pastor ndaba all the way from clc christian life center headquarters in south africa uh, before i start i'd like to take this opportunity just to greet um acknowledge uh, our parents in the lord bishop mono and pastor tina mono um, for being uh, their children and um, for us for me to be here today i just want to acknowledge them in the name of Jesus Christ and also our host, uh, Pastor D and Pastor T, Mono. We just, I would just to acknowledge you and say thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity, for this privilege, you know, to, to stand here and uh, to speak to the whole world through you. May God bless you. May God increase you. May God enlarge your cherishing. May God indeed increase you more and more. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, okay, today I want us to... Go through the word of God. Indeed, this season has been declared the season of higher grace. And uh, nothing has changed. Indeed, this is a season of higher grace. And we are ex still expecting great things to happen upon our lives. We are still expecting wonderful things to come upon our lives. Because this season has been declared the season of higher grace. And it shall be so to everyone who has had this weight and who has received this weight. Hallelujah. So today, I want us to look at the word of God. My title of the message today is, is Ask and You Will Receive. That's my title for today. Ask 
and you will receive. On that note, I want us to go to the Word of God, to the book of Luke, chapter 11. We're going to read the Word of God. The book of Luke, chapter 11, I'm going to read from verse 9 and 10. The Bible reads, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 10. For everyone that ask receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. God says we must ask. Not you may ask. But Jesus Christ said, ask and shall be given to you. Actually, other version, they put it this way. If I can read from another version, verse 9. And I say to you, keep asking and it shall be given unto you. Keep searching and you will find. Keep knocking and the door will be opened to you. Verse 10. For everyone who asks receives and the one who searches finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. From this very scripture it is very clear very clear that God wants us as his children to have good things in life. Hallelujah. He wants us to have good things in life. Way before the man of God declared this is in the seat of higher grace, God had already intended that us as children of God we may walk in the higher grace spirit. We may walk in high grace in our lives. Simply, if you if we are looking at this word of God, we can clearly see that indeed that God's intention is even say keep on asking because God wants us to have good things in life. God wants you and me to have great things in life. Let me tell you something. We don't ask God for things that have not yet that have not already been provided for. Let me repeat that. We don't ask for things that have not already been provided for. Hallelujah. So when you ask for that job, when you ask for that child, when you ask for that marriage, when you ask for that car, when you ask for that business, whatsoever, you are asking for the things that have already been provided for through Jesus. That's why Jesus Christ said, ask, ask, because things have already been provided for. But the question is, do you need this thing? God, can't, God won't force things to us. He won't force things to you. Hallelujah. He won't force things to you. It's you who must decide. I'm asking for this. This is the kind of car I want. This is the kind of, 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 of lifestyle I want. This is the kind of, of, of whatsoever it could be. Whatsoever it could be, it's up to me and you to ask for those things. It could be from the small things to the big things. Hallelujah. It could be for that television set that come from the wall. Hallelujah. It's up to you and me to ask for these things and follow the principles of God to receive them and stay in the expectation to receive those things. Hallelujah. Knowing that God has already provided those things for, for us. So today, I want us to look at some points. Hallelujah. We're going to look at some points concerning this matter of asking, knowing that we will receive. My first point is that our Heavenly Father is glorified. Our Heavenly Father is glorified. That's my first point. Let's go to the Word of God. The book of John, chapter 15. Book of John, chapter 15, 
verse 7 to 8. I will read. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Already the first principle we found there that we need to, to, to follow. If my words abide in you, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, or we or could say, you shall ask whatsoever, and it shall be done unto you. And then verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified. Jesus Christ now is telling this, the, 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 his disciples that this, the, 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 this is how my Father is being glorified. Herein is my Father glorified. How? That he bear much fruit, so that so shall ye be my disciples. Hallelujah. So when you're asking for that thing, when you're asking for that kind of lifestyle, when you're asking to live that kind of way, it's not just about you. Bible says, our heavenly Father, God, is being glorified by that. Hence, we should never settle for less in our lives. We should never settle for less in our lives. Pandemic or no pandemic, this scripture, this word of God was written more than 2,000 years ago. Since then, so many sicknesses of diseases have been discovered and still more will be discovered. But the word of God still remains to be the same. Herein is my Father glorified that he bear much fruit. God wants to see us walking in that realm of bearing fruit in our lives. Hallelujah. We need to ask. Keep on asking. Hallelujah. Keep on asking for the things that we believe God for in our lives. It could be a healing of your loved ones. It could be a healing of your father, or your mother, or your child, or whatsoever. Bible say, ask. Ask. And it shall be given to you. Herein is my Father glorified. God is not glorified when we live in lack. God is not glorified when we, when we live our lives in poverty. God is not glorified. Hallelujah. God is not glorified. It doesn't matter what the sickness could be doing right now, what the disease could be doing right now, the COVID-19 could be doing right now. But still, God's will is for me and you to live in, in divine health. That's still God's will. God still expects to see us walking in health. Hallelujah. He still wants to, because he's, he's, be, he's being glorified when we live in health. Hallelujah. He's being glorified when we live well. That's how God is being glorified upon our lives hallelujah herein is my father glorified that he bear much fruit so you shall so shall ye be my disciples that was my first point our heavenly father is glorified when we ask for things in our lives it's not wrong to ask for things things it's not wrong to ask for things in our lives hallelujah amen my point point number two be fully persuaded about God's faithfulness as you ask God I want you to be fully persuaded about God's faithfulness let's go to the Word of God I'm gonna go to the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 21 Romans 4 verse 21 and being fell, and being fully persuaded 
that what he has promised, he was able also to perform. What God has promised, he is also able to perform. Obviously, this story was a story about Abraham. Abraham believing God for a child after a very long time. The Bible tells us now here yeah, that if, 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 if we look at that from verse 20, it says, And he sticketh not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He didn't stagger. And in verse 29, verse 29 says, And being fully persuaded. That's my point. Fully persuaded. Be fully persuaded that God wants you to have this thing. God wants you to have this kind of life that you want. Be fully persuaded. The Bible tells us that the devil is a liar and he is the father of lies. And for him to lie is just natural because he is a father of lies. Hallelujah. God told us that for a reason. So that when the enemy comes in and whispers those things in your ears and say, you, you do not deserve this. You do not deserve this kind of life. You do not, you do not deserve to have this thing. You must always know that it's a lie. Be fully persuaded. Be fully persuaded that your, your children, hallelujah, will not end up being devoured by drugs. They will not end up being in the streets. They will not end up ending, uh, uh, joining some form of gangsterism. That your children will go to school. That your children will finish well in school. That your children will be something in life. Be fully persuaded. Hallelujah. Be fully persuaded that your father, your mother will recover. It doesn't matter what could be said. They may say the hospitals are fully are full now. They don't take admissions. Stand in the word of God that your loved ones will recover. Your loved ones will be well. Be fully persuaded because anything contrary to death is a lie. Hallelujah. Anything contrary to death is a lie. The promise of God, they are all yes and amen. And their yes and amen is not dependent on your status. On your status, whether it may be your education, where you are coming from, who you are, your gender, your, your, the language you speak, it's not dependent on that. Hallelujah. All the promises of God are yes and amen. And what God is expecting from me and you is to be fully persuaded that what he has promised he is able also to perform. What God has promised, He is also able to perform. Hallelujah. Stand, what is needed for me and you is to stand upon the weight. Stand on His weight. Stand. In when we, in, 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 the Bible declares that in, in, in some era that what, when you have done everything else, stand. Stand where? Stand upon His weight. Stand on His weight. Stand on his way. Be fully persuaded that you will not die, but you live and declare the works of the Lord. Be fully persuaded that you shall not die early. You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. As you ask God, be fully persuaded that what you've asked for, God shall give it to you. Hallelujah. What you've asked for, God will give it to you. Be fully persuaded. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, everyone that asks, receive. Everyone that asks, receive. Everyone that asks, receive. Hallelujah. Everyone that asks, receive. You may say, I've asked for this, I've not seen. I've asked for this, it's not here. What's happening? Hallelujah. But the Bible has given us a promise that everyone that asks, receive. 
the fact that it has not revealed or manifested to you, it does not mean it has not been released. Hallelujah. The fact that it is, you have not touched that car, you have not touched that, 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 that house, you are not living in that house, it does not mean that the house has not been released for you. Hallelujah. You need to be fully persuaded that that house has been released for you. And it's going to come to pass to you. Hallelujah. It's going to come to pass to you. Amen. Be fully persuaded. Because the Bible declares that when you ask, it will be given to you. Keep on asking. It will be given to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Be fully persuaded. That point Walk in love. Walk in love. By looking at asking as we ask God, knowing that we're going to receive. There are some of the things I want us to look at. Walk in love. We're going to look at the book of First John chapter 4, verse 16. The Bible declares, First John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelt in love dwelt in God. And God in him. Hallelujah. But it says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he that dwelt in love dwelt in God. And God is in him very important very important that we walk in love as a children of God as you ask God for things in your life I cannot stress this more I can not stress this more than enough that we need to walk in love walk in love hallelujah Walk in love. Amen. Walk in love. Because when we do so, by walking in love, God, we remain in God and God remains in us. By walking in love. We can't walk in hatred. Because when we are walking in hatred, living with hatred in our hearts, or any other thing that is not good, we, 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 we isolate ourselves in that way uh, to God. We isolate ourselves from God by walking otherwise. By walking otherwise, we isolate ourselves from God. Hallelujah. And it may not be possible or easy for us to ask things from God when we are not walking in love. So it's very important that as a child of God, we walk in love. Walk in love. As we keep on asking God, walk in love. Hallelujah. Walk in love. Amen. Walk in love. Sorry, you don't abort that thing that God has raised for you. Hallelujah. You know, when the mother, when the, when, when the woman is pregnant, is being told uh, by a doctor that she must eat certain kind of foods. She must live a certain way. Hallelujah. She must conduct a certain way. Why? Because she's carrying something special. She's carrying a challenge. She don't just eat anything. She don't just live anyhow. Because she's pregnant. She's carrying something. She walk in a certain way. I want to compare that to us as well as we expect God, expecting God to facilitate things from God. It's like we are pregnant. We need to walk in a certain way and that certain way is love. Walk in love true and true. Walk in love true and true. Why? Because we are protecting what we, what, what we are carrying. Hallelujah. We are protecting what we are carrying. 
Amen. Because that thing has already been released for you. When you ask from God, all that is needed to repent is for it to manifest. Hallelujah. And then by not walking in love, walking in hate, walking in, in unforgiveness, walking in, in, in whatsoever and all those things, by doing that, we may abort the child that you are carrying. Hallelujah. So when you are asking things from God, if those things don't come to pass upon our lives, we don't have to say, God, what is wrong with you? We need to look at ourselves. We need to observe ourselves. Hallelujah. We need to observe ourselves as children of God. And also know that the enemy may play the part as well. Hallelujah. He may play a part as well. And we need to, but when, when is that the case? That's when we need to take our authority as the children of God. Take our authority. Because the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against the principalities. I mean, take authority on such matters. Hallelujah. So we need to walk in love as the children of God. Amen. We must walk in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let me check the time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But I think I'm still fine. Amen. Then, point number four. We have angels assigned to us. We have angels assigned to us. Oh, gosh. My God. We've got angels assigned to us. You've got angels assigned to you. As long as you're a child of God, you've got angels assigned to you. That's how important you are. You've got angels, you've got servants assigned to you. Let's read the word of God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. The Bible reads, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? It's a question. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? You've got ministering spirits. These are the angels. That God has released upon our lives. That we should empower them. That we should make them. Hallelujah. To work for us. Hallelujah. That we should make them to work for us. Ministering spirits, angels are sent for me and you. We've got angels assigned for us. Hallelujah. You've got angels assigned for you. As you ask God, instruct your angels. Instruct them over your case, over your life. Instruct them. Instruct your angels. Hallelujah. As you're believing God for that thing. Instruct your angels. Psalm 3 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, ye angels, that excel in strength and do his commandments. Hear him unto the voice of his word. Hallelujah. Don't make your angels to be unemployed when you've got needs in your lives. Don't make your angels to be unemployed. Hallelujah. When they need to bring something to you. When they need to bring that thing, that special thing to your life. When they need to bring that thing that God has released for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says they excel. They excel. Someone three verse 20. <laughs> they excel. Psalm 3 verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye angels, that excel in strength and do his commandments. Hear him unto the voice of his word. Your angels are, 
are waiting to hear and to your voice. The angels are waiting to hear and to your voice. You as a child of God, the angels are waiting to hear and to your voice. Don't make them to be angry. Don't make them to be angry. Amen. They must not just be angry. They are waiting to hear from you. Hallelujah. They are waiting to hear from you. They are there for that reason. I don't know what is it that is in your heart. I don't know what is that that you have asked God for. Your angels are waiting for you. They are waiting for you to give them instructions. To give them the instructions because they've been assigned to you. Hallelujah. They've been assigned to you. Amen. So, going forward, moving on. Uh, point number five. God knows what you need. God knows what you need. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Bible reads, Be not yet therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask. For your father knoweth the things ye have need of before you ask him. Hallelujah. Your heavenly father knows the things you are in need of before you ask him. Before you ask him. The fact that God, your heavenly father knows the things you need, it doesn't mean like then you don't have to ask him. Say, God, you already know I need this. God, my father, you already know I need this and this and this. Hallelujah. The fact that he knows, you still need to ask him for that. Bible say, before you ask him, you still need to ask him. Hallelujah. You still need to ask him for that thing that you believe in God for, that you desire in your life. You still need to ask him. Hallelujah. You are not asking as, as uh, 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 you are not asking on the basis that you are not sure you're gonna get it or not. <laughs> because the Bible has told us already that when you ask, you shall receive. Hallelujah. If you've got a child, you may know that your child loves something. No, there's something that is special to your child. Hallelujah. So as a parent, it will still please you to hear your child asking you for something, even though you may know that they have they, 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 they the need of that. Hallelujah. So, as a children of God, we need to know that as we ask, God already knows what we need, but we must still ask for it. Hallelujah. We must still ask for it. Amen. Ask for it. And then God will release it to, 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 to you. Ask for it and our God, our Heavenly Father, will release it to you. Amen. Because that is pleasure. Let's, let's look at, at the book of at the book of uh, Luke. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter chapter 12 verse 32. Luke chapter 32, the Bible reads, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. It is God's pleasure to give you what you're asking for. It delights him to give you 
what you are asking for. Hallelujah. It gives him pleasure to give it to you. Hallelujah. It just gives him pleasure. Amen. It gives him pleasure to give it to you. So fear not. Don't say, God, I've asked for too much. God's got enough. Don't say, God, I've asked for too much. I've asked for a lot of things. God is God of more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. He's a God of abundance. He's an unlimited God. It, he's got no limits. He's a God of more than enough. Hallelujah. He's a God of more than enough. Amen. Our Heavenly Father is a God of more than enough. Amen. He's a God of more than enough. Hallelujah. So keep on asking. Hallelujah. Because it is your Father's good pleasure to give those things to you. It is His pleasure to give you that latest model of that gadget whatsoever. It is His pleasure to give it to you. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit your God. It's a season of high grace. It's a season of high grace. It's a season of high grace. Hallelujah. It is a season of high grace. No limits. Don't limit God. Don't look at your abilities. Hallelujah. And limit God. Don't limit God based on your limitations. Based on your abilities. Don't limit God. Because God is more than enough. God is more than enough. He's able to do big things. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. More than what you can ask or think. He is able. According to Ephesians 3, verse 20, God is able. Don't limit him. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. What you may think or ask. Let's read the, let's, let's read the, script, the scripture. Ephesians 3, verse 20. Let's read it. Bible reads, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. To do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Above all that we ask or think. Above all that you ask. Hallelujah. Above all that. That on its own shows you that God is expecting us to ask for things. He's expecting us to ask for things. And then when we do so, Him, He's, Baba said, he's able to do exceeding abundant above what you have asked for amen imagine if you ask for that you know you 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 you're like let me stretch my faith let me just ask for this big thing let me ask for this this great thing let me just ask for this you know Bible says God is able to do exceedingly abundant above even that thing you've asked for if you say this is the last number of a card that I may ask for Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above that car that you're asking for. If you say, let me ask for this kind of a house, let me ask for this kind of a mansion, the Bible says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that mansion you asked for. Hallelujah. Amen. Just go, God, He just want to, He just want to exceed our expectations. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. Amen. So from this it's pretty clear that we can't we can't come to God and ask for small things. We can't come to God and ask for small things. And then we we will not doing value. We will not we will not doing justice to the scripture. If it is three, verse 20. If you're going to ask for something small, will not do just, justice to the scripture for God to do exceeding abundantly above what you're asking for. Will not do justice for that. 
we can't ask small things. We can't ask small when we're coming to God. We must ask big. Hallelujah. Knowing that this is our season of higher grace. Hallelujah. My point number six. Ask correctly. Ask correctly. We're going to go to the book of James chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Book of James chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. The Bible reads, What is the source of wars and fights among you? Don't they come from cravings? They are at war within you. Verse 2. You desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. You do not have because you do not ask. Hallelujah. You do not have. Why? Because you do not ask. You do not have. Why? Because you do not ask. Let me read from them. From another version, uh, King James. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Can they not hence even of your last that war in your members? Ye last and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Because you ask not. Ask correctly. As you are asking for that thing, the other version is say, because of your evil desires. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord, and the Lord will give you desires of your heart. But if your desires are not correct and evil, it may impede you from receiving what you are asking for. Are you asking for that house so that you be the, the only champion, the only person in your neighborhood who stay in a beautiful house? Are you asking for that car so that people can see that, wow, he's driving a most beautiful car more than anyone else? Are you asking for that promotion so that you, 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 you live above anyone else? Check your motives. Check your motives. Check if your desires are not evil. Ask correctly. Hallelujah. Ask correctly. Do not ask because you want you, 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 you want to be the one. You want to be above everyone else. You want anyone else to remain behind. You want anyone else to remain down there. Ask correctly. We need to learn to ask correctly. Check our motives. Check our desires as we ask from God. Hallelujah. And when we do that, we can rest assured that whenever we ask from God, we will receive from him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That was my last point and I hope that you will be blessed by this weight wherever you are. May God bless you as you receive his weight. In Jesus name. Amen. us from. This is Higher Grace Conference 2020. My name is Pastor T uh, from Christian Life Center Malaysia and I'm just here to appreciate each one of you that took time to be a part of this conference. We have had such a glorious time for seven days. God has been so awesome. He has been revealing great and mighty things you know, in our lives in this season of Higher Grace. First and foremost, I just want to appreciate our parents Bishop Mono and Mom Pastor Tina Mono in South Africa Christian Life Center. Thank you so much for giving us this platform. A platform where you let us excel, where you let us grow. 
and exercise our talents. Mom and Dad, we appreciate you, we acknowledge you, and we honor the anointing over your lives. I also just want to take this time to appreciate Christian Life Center Malaysia for making this happen, for being a part of this conference. Myself and Pastor D appreciate you and we love you so much. We couldn't have done this without you. I also just want to take this time to appreciate our conference committee, our media team, our ushers, our intercessors who prayed tirelessly to make sure that this conference was a success. Thank you so much to those who sold, who gave, not only their time, but their finances to make sure that we had such an excellent conference. Everyone who logged in from everywhere, whichever country you were logging in from, we just want to say thank you. We appreciate your attendance to this conference. We also want to appreciate TNS Designed for such an amazing broadcast, such an excellent broadcast. Thank you so much. We want to take this time to also appreciate our MCs, you know, from the beginning of the conference to the end of the conference. Thank you so much. We appreciate you to King Jay for our conference theme song. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. Our speakers, Pastor Gift, Elder Tatenda, Apostle Felix, uh, Pastor Fizo, Minister Farai, and Pastor Ndaba. Thank you so much, men of God. We really, really appreciate you. May the Lord himself continue to bless you. May he keep you in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, last but not the least, we just want to take this time to appreciate Pastor D, Pastor David Mono, our pastor here in Christian Life Center, Malaysia. Pastor, sir, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the vision that you have set for us. And we just want to acknowledge that we are running and we are running with the vision at hand. We honor you, sir, and we appreciate you. We also just want to, you know, to just appreciate God for this amazing conference. I want to declare to you that even as you have enjoyed these seven days of higher grace, may you continue to soar in everything that you do. May God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah.